What's up, guys? Coach Bobby here. Back to my uh, 45 to 45 series. Uh, we're going to go right into Friday's schedule, a typical Friday for Coach Bobby. So as you guys have, have, have been told over and over again, it's important to have a routine, right? A routine to both your workouts and to your nutrition and your eating. Very simple. So my routine, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I work out. And Saturday or Sunday, I'll add a bonus session, right, with, with, with or without my class, usually with my class. So because of that, it's typically not as intense as my Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, um, but it's still a workout. So I, I take into account that session when outlining my week, all right? So now we're at Friday. Monday and Wednesday were workout days. Tuesday and Thursdays were burn days or days at which I'm trying to tap into my fat stores. All right. So on Friday, that's my that's my last intense workout of the week. And just like with Mondays, I tell you guys, Mondays workout is critical. Fridays might be as critical for different reasons. All right. Number one, or the reason being, Monday's workout is meant to set you up for the week, right? To burn fat, right? Friday's workout is meant to put you in position as to not gain fat, okay? So many of us live this, this, this continuous cycle by which we try to eat relatively light or clean during the week and then enjoy or overindulge on the weekends. Because many of us don't deplete our glycogen stores or glucose stores enough, by the end of the week, by the time Friday and Saturday comes around, many of us are at high risk for fat storage, right? If you, if you remember back to my, to my picture, my analogy, we have two fuel tanks, right? One is made up of uh, the, the, the combination or aggregate of glucose in the bloodstream and stored glucose, uh, glycogen in the muscles and liver, right? That I call my G tank, right? Or my glucose slash glycogen tank. Right then, there's the ketone fuel tank, which gets filled up once our body has no more glucose and glycogen to use. It oxidizes fat and and creates ketone bodies and fills up this ketone tank for use by the body for all types of activities. The same way it will use glucose. Right, so our body can use those two fuel sources. When our body is full of glucose and glycogen and has no other place to store it, right, once our bloodstream uh, is full and our body secretes insulin and pushes the uh, glucose out of our bloodstream for storage into our muscle and liver. Once those areas are full, our body has no other recourse than to store extra fuel for long-term storage or fat into fat cells, right? So what happens many, many, many times to people is that they don't eat clean enough or exercise hard enough to get their glucose low enough to the point where they are not at high risk of fat storage when they go into the weekend. So again, while Monday's workout is critical, right, after a weekend of indulgence to get our body back into position to burn fat, right, get our glycogen and glucose levels down so that we are able, if not Tuesday, then Thursday, to go into fat burning mode, right? So Monday's workout is critical for that reason because most of us have uh, our highest levels of glucose and glycogen Sunday night, Monday morning, right? So the reverse is true as well. Going into the weekend, we want to position our body as to not gain fat, not get fatter. So we have to take measures on Fridays for most people so that we go into the weekend a weekend for most of us that is absent much activity and has increased fuel intake, at, le at, at the very least, and most importantly, carbohydrate intake. So if we're going to have less movement and more intake, we have to go into it with some momentum, if you will, with our glycogen and glucose tanks as low as possible as to not be at risk once we fill it up to go overboard, right? So I'm not advocating that we 
not have fun, not enjoy ourselves, not enjoy the weekends after a long week of work and working hard and earning, earning money for your family and getting up early and all that stuff. I'm not advocating we don't enjoy the weekends. What I am saying is our bodies work a certain way. And if we don't recognize that and take measures, then our bodies have no other recourse than to store fat. So what you have to do on a Friday is make sure you take some measures, which I'll go into on my schedule, what I do, so that you go into the weekend okay with having a hamburger, okay with having a hot dog, okay with having some pasta, okay with having some rice, or whatever it is, right? Not having to worry as much about that, knowing that the environment you're gonna be in, whether it's a party, whether it's drinks with your girlfriends, whether it's a ball game, whatever it is, you're gonna be in an environment likely that makes it hard to resist the temptations of glucose, of carbohydrates. So rather than pretend you're gonna win this war, go into it um, with low enough levels that any indulgence you have, as long as it's not too egregious, won't put you into fat, into fat storage mode, all right? So what do I do? What, what, is, what, is, what do I do? So again, my, my schedule for working out is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, right? And I treat the bookends of those workouts the most uh, the most importantly, right? So Monday, I'm trying to get right back into, into my fat burning zone as fast as possible. So I'm cognizant over the weekend um, as to where my levels might be, right? My glycogen and glucose levels might be. And knowing that, I, and knowing that, that my workout on Monday will be predicated in large part based on how much I went up on my glycogen levels, I'm cognizant. So I can train less hard on Monday if I don't do as much damage over the weekend, right? So uh, Monday, nonetheless, is meant to get me right back into my fat burning zone, right? So Mondays are critical. Fridays, I don't like going into a weekend having to manage what I eat too much. I want to be able to enjoy my son's ball game. I want to be able to enjoy time in front of a movie with my family watching something. I want to be able to enjoy going to my daughter's Friday night football games. I want to be able to enjoy watching my Cowboys game and eating whatever I want to eat, all right? So knowing that, I go into the weekend prepared, right? How do I do that? So here's my Friday schedule. I'll get right to it. So again, 4 a.m., 4.15, I wake up. Same, same exact routine in the morning as Monday and Wednesday. Same exact routine in terms of what I do, not necessarily the times, as every morning. So on Fridays, just like Monday and Wednesday, my work days, I get up at 4, 4.15, I have water immediately. I follow that with my ketones, right? Again, giving my body immediate fuel for the day. Immediate fuel for the brain, immediate fuel for my body, okay? So um, as I head out the door, as always, I, I make my coffee, my bulletproof coffee that has fat in it, that's gonna give me a bridge, right, once the ketones wear off, which is several hours, but I want to make sure my body has fuel that it can use immediately once that ketone fuel wears off. So from 5.30 a.m. until about 9.30 a.m., I do my bulletproof coffee. I give my body some fat, and it's a long-lasting, long you know, slow drip fuel that I'm giving it so that when the ketones wear off, boom, they're going into effect right away. So 5.30 to 9.30, my bulletproof coffee. All right, so my last class before my lunch class is at nine. So about midway through my last class, I'll begin drinking my BCAs, my branch chain amino acids. Again, that's meant to give my body the building blocks it needs, my muscles, the building blocks they need before I even break them down to rebuild and repair, right? And this is gonna help me to manage my lean muscle and not let my body use that, use that breakdown uh, for fuel, right? So I'm protecting my muscles, I'm allowing them the fuel and the building blocks they need to be rebuilt so that my body continues to get leaner and stronger, which is gonna help me long-term wise manage my body composition. Again, your biggest asset in terms of body composition management is having lean muscle. It's not cardio, it's not low carb, it's having lean muscle. Your body's gonna burn more calories outside of your workout and outside of what you eat than anything. So you want a machine that helps you in this fuel burning process. And the leaner your body is, the better. So to make sure 
my body has what it needs. When I train, I begin this BCA, branched chain amino acid uh, influx or ingestion before my workout. So 9.30, I begin drinking that. And I'll sip that for several hours, as I've said. So I'll drink it before the workout, right? The class ends at about 10. I start my workout about 10.30, right? 10.15, 10.30 or so. And I'll go to about noon, 11.45 or noon, before I go to my, my noon class, which is off-site. So from 9.30 to about 12.30, and then I have some left over for after my workout sometimes. So it's basically going to sandwich all right, and book in my workout before, during, and after my workout. I'm sipping these BCAs right, to make sure my body has what it needs. Right, so from 9:30 a.m. until about 12:30 p.m., I'm sipping on this BCA drink. Right, so that's going to take me till after my workout. Okay, so now on Monday and Wednesday, I've told you guys the days you train is a great opportunity to eat the things that you know you're going to crave. Or you have been craving. So in the very beginning, when I started this process towards having much, much less carbohydrate intake, I would make sure that I had everything I enjoyed, right? Rice, bread, cereal, uh, cookies, all those things that I like to eat. I made sure I had those, number, first of all, or the, at first, on the same day as I trained. And then progressively closer and closer to my workout window. And then once you uh, reduce that, that dependency on carbohydrates, on sugar, then you can just intermittently add the carbohydrates to the workout days as you feel needed. You know, again, to, to alleviate or, or, or eliminate the, the potential to crave bad things on days when it's not going to help your body or, or do damage to your body. So you might occasionally have a sandwich or have um, some rice on the day you train, just so you don't crave rice the next day when you don't train, all right? So uh, on a Monday and Wednesday, occasionally I will still do that. I'll have any carbs that I, that I wanna have to, to minimize further damage later, I'll have those on Monday or Wednesday. On Fridays, as of now, according to my current schedule, I don't do that, right? Because Friday nights, my daughter has football games. She's on a dance team for a high school football team. So I know most Friday nights I'm going to indulge in candy and maybe popcorn and maybe hot dogs and maybe soda. So if I know that I'm going to have carbohydrates, I need to make sure I go into that environment uh, ready and okay with having some carbohydrate and glucose uptick. Okay, so Fridays as of now for the next for the, for the last month and the next month or, or and a half or so, I make sure Fridays I fast longer. So rather than refuel my body with some carbohydrates, which there is some benefit, as I said before, outside of just uh, keeping cravings at bay, but knowing that I'm going to have carbohydrates later, on Fridays, when I come home from my workout, I fast longer, right? I'll try to go out until... 2, 2.30, 3, 3.30 if I can. And even then, rather than have um, food, like protein, fat, if I'm craving uh, carbs, maybe carbs, but rather than have any of those, even the ones that are more beneficial to me, like fat and protein, I will make a shake, right? And so this is, this is a, a purposeful uh, strategy to make sure that I go into this football game environment Number one, lower on in, in my glucose levels. Number two, somewhat satiated from the shake. Okay, so at 2.30 or 3 or 3.30 in that time frame, I'll make this thick protein shake that will last me for a couple of hours, right? I'll put uh, low sugar ice cream. I'll put whey protein in it, powder. I'll put almonds in it. I'll put some spinach or kale frozen. I'll put... Um, some Greek yogurt for probiotics, um, and I'll put some almond milk, maybe, right? And potentially, I'll, I'll add some of the leftover bulletproof coffee, right? So this is meant to control the carbohydrates that I intake, and then to give my body more protein from the workout, which, again, was, was uh, one of my more strenuous ones, trying to purposely bring the glycogen levels down, 
right? And now this protein protects my muscles, gives my muscles even more uh, building blocks after the BCAs. But now I'm satiated, right? So now I sip this 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 shake, you know, from around three o'clock, you know, for several hours, you know, two, three, four, five o'clock before I finish it. Okay. Now I don't feel the need to eat, which will happen if I don't eat after a workout, and I pretend that I can go without eating until I get to my party or my or my event or my game. I'm fooling myself. So I make sure that. I look. I have. I have foresight. I look ahead, right? I know in about in about three or four hours from when I get home, I'm going to be in an environment with a lot of junk food and and tempted. My son's going to want candy, right? People are around me are going to have hot dogs and hamburgers. So rather than pretend I have the willpower to resist, I go into it, uh, prepare my body to resist it naturally, right? Physiologically. So I have this shake now. When I go to the game. I can allow myself to enjoy the game, right? So I actually go to Walgreens and buy candy, right? Hot tamales. You know, for the, for the first four games, I had two boxes of hot tamales at the game and a soda, right? With no fear of fat, right? Of fat accumulation or fat storage. Because I knew, number one, that I worked out hard enough to bring my glycogen levels down. I did that purposefully, I knew I knew what I was getting into, and then knowing I was going into this environment, I fasted longer, and then had a protein only, some fat, mostly protein only shake to keep me satiated, and number and number two, prevent me from getting hungry before I got into this environment. Right now, I go into the environment, and from 7:30, which is kickoff, until midnight, I can do what I want to do. I can have planned carb consumption. Right, I, I'm not cheating. Right, people say yeah, it's a cheat day. No, I planned it. Right, I strategized for it. So I don't need to call it a cheat day because it's part of my strategy. I know I'm never going to be no carbs in my life, and most of you are never going to be no carbs in your life. So rather than go do it for 30 days, plan and strategize around doing something permanently. So I can permanently go low to no carbs most days, fast most days and then have periods throughout the week where I plan to enjoy myself, right? And have no risk of fat storage. Why? Because fat only gets stored once our body's full of glycogen. And if my glycogen levels are low enough after I train and didn't put any more carbohydrate fuel in my body, now when it raises up, I have almost no threat of it going over. Okay? So I know my body pretty well now after months of doing this, and so it's going to take some time for you to understand what that means in terms of what where my weight's at. You know, uh, is it low enough for me to think I'm close to depletion and fat burning? Is it too high or high enough to where I'm at risk of fat storage? That takes some monitoring of the scale of, of how you feel and so forth. But once you get that, it's really pretty easy, right? Your, your number one step toward ideal body composition is to stop getting fatter, right? So stop letting every weekend take over you, right? And, and, and enjoying it so much that your body is forced to store fat. Fat for many people that would never come off because they're not willing to do the steps, working hard, fasting, getting the glycogen levels down, the steps necessary to get rid of that fat. So don't store any more fat ever again. That's the first step. And it's not, it's not as hard as it sounds. Just don't let your body get to a point where you are at risk of fat storage and then go out into an environment where you go over, over glycogen storage and your body's forced to, forced to store fat. Now, if I had lived this week the way many people will, the way I used to live, and then gone into a football game and had what I wanted to have, right? Two hot dogs, some candy, a soda. It's very likely I would have stored body fat. Right, I would have come back out of that weekend, you know, weighing a number, right, and then feeling bad going back the next day, maybe a Monday, trying to train, you know, as we often do. I want to work off how I ate this weekend. Well, if I stored fat, you're not working the fat off. The fat has been stored, unfortunately, right. So you might work off the glycogen and the glucose that is stored in your body, but if you went over that storage capacity. The extra amount, let's say you were one for me, let's say I was 176, 
right, going into Friday. And then I, I had I had cake, pasta, rice, whatever. And then since Saturday, I was 181. 181 is about my, my max as far as my capacity storage. I know this from weighing myself almost continuously after a workout, when I wake up, when I go to bed, so on and so forth. So I know how my body is. But if I get to 180, I know my body's at risk of fat storage. So let's say I ignore that. Let's say I go and have pizza and then I have donuts, right? My body's full. It's full of glycogen. It can't, my muscles are full, full, my liver's full. So my body can't store that glycogen anywhere else. So it has to store it as fat. It has to. And so now I come back and Monday morning I'm 182, for example. Only a little bit over my max capacity, which I believe is about 181. Right, so a pound over my my capacity, right? That pound extra, which is more than what it would be, but let's say for simplicity, that pound extra has been stored, long term long term storage, right? So Monday, I have the mindset like many people do, I'm gonna burn off the weekend. I eat like crap. I'm gonna burn it off. Okay, so I come and train hard, and I might get my weight back down to 188. Like the way I train, I might get it down to 187, right? But that's just the stored glycogen. The fat that was stored is gone, right? That's, that's, that's stored in my fat cells. And I can't tap into that until I get all the way down to 173 or so. That's my, my basement from my glycogen depletion. So not until I get to 173, 174, does my body begin to oxidize fat. Now, everyone's different. My point is that this notion that you can come back after the fact and make up for it is false. You might lose weight, but you won't be losing the fat that was stored, okay? So I make sure, I know Friday nights are going to be crazy and full of glucose intake. So I go into it the right way. I wake up, I have my ketones, right, 4 o'clock, 4.15. I do my bulletproof coffee. Again, it's a fasting mechanism, giving my body fuel as a bridge, 5.30 to 9.30. I begin my BCAs. Right at 9.30 before my workout. I bust my ass on the workout. You have to, guys. You can't bullshit, right? Monday's critical. Friday's critical. If you want to look good. If you don't want to look good, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not telling you that you should want to have nice legs or nice abs or nice arms or toned hamstrings and quads and calves. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is if you want that, this is what it costs. This is what it takes, right? So you have to work hard enough if you want to have fun at the party, at the cocktails, at the game, right? Make sure that you work your butt off, get the glycogen down, right? After you're done, after I'm done, my workout, rather than come back and refuel like I might do on a Monday or Wednesday, I fast longer, right? And then about 2.30 or 3.30-ish, I'll begin a protein shake, right? I call it a preemptive protein shake. And that's meant to give my body fuel, give my muscles building blocks, but more importantly, to give my body prepped for an environment that will be dangerous for me, right? A football game, a party, whatever, a movies, whatever it is, right? So at about, at about three o'clock, I'll start this protein shake that I'll last for a couple hours. I'll just sit there, no rush. You're, try, you're trying to extend it actually, as long as you can. So you drink this protein shake and that's gonna give your body uh, fuel to make sure all the triggers that make you hungry physiologically, not habit-wise, are turned off, right? And now, knowing you've, you've taken the measures, you can go into the, this dangerous environment, right, and have planned carb consumption, right? You plan for it. You plan to buy two hot dogs. You plan to buy a slice of pizza. You plan to have that pasta at dinner. You plan to have two drinks, whatever it is. Now you go into a guilt-free having planned to have that. Okay, so that sets you up. And then hopefully, if you do all that right, then yes, you've gained some glycogen, right? It's not a, it's not a fat burning day for sure. And Saturday and Sunday might not be either. But we've taken measures to allow ourselves to enjoy Friday without risking fat storage, right? And that's really what, what Friday is about for most people, right? It's about making sure that we've done our work during the week. Hopefully, we've had one or two days of fat burning, maybe three. You know, if we, if we get good at it, maybe it's more. But but two days of muscle building, two days of fat burning. Now we're trying to make sure that we start next week ahead of the game, and we don't take back steps 
and gain fat. We don't gain fat over the weekend. And we can only do that if we go into the weekend with our levels low enough. All right? So I'll recap real fast. 4 o'clock, 4.15 a.m., water and ketones. Always, every single day of the week, I do my exogenous ketones. I, I mean, I can't say it enough, guys. It's the best tool in my toolbox. All right? 5.30 to 9.30, bulletproof coffee, as always. Right? That's going to extend the bridge between... Uh, my, my water only, my fast, and when I eat, right? The BCAs, 9.30 to 12.30. That's for my muscles to make sure that they have what they need when I break them down to be repaired and rebuilt. It also keeps your, all the hormones that make you hungry at bay because part of that hunger we get is your body needing fuel for whatever reason, right? And part of those reasons is to build muscle. So when your body feels it needs to repair muscles, it will make you hungry. So the BCAs in some ways circumvent that process as well. And then instead of eating, right, right away, as we might do Monday, Wednesday, we hold off, right, we get a protein shake at about three. That lasts for a couple of hours, right? We sip it, right? Again, planning for the evening. And then 7.30 in my case, until midnight or when I go to bed, I'm just trying to hold, hold serve, right? And, and enjoy myself, but hopefully I prepare myself to not have to watch too much of what I eat. And then I can have some planned carb consumption. Not overdoing it, right? And you'll find as you go along, once you have success, you won't even want to overindulge too much. Yeah, right now you think you can't have, you can't not have pasta or can't not have beer and pizza. But once you see how this thing is working, and you're benefiting from it, that pizza won't look as good as, as how you feel when you, when you come into Monday not having lost any ground, all right? So hope that was helpful, guys. Uh, I'm going to get right to Saturdays and post that. Uh, but yeah, this, you know, have a system, have a routine, have a strategy, and then follow it. And I promise you, you'll have success. All right, guys. Love you. See you soon. Bye-bye.